the pale blue dot. Paulie, welcome to the show, my friend. Hello, sir. Mate, you were the first, uh, you are in the first 10, and uh, now you're on again. You're a veteran. Amazing. You're a uh, veteran. Yes, we had a mutually beneficial podcast episode, I believe. You yeah. were on mine. I showed you yours, and you showed me I showed me you mine. mine. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in a room together alone. Correct. <laughs> Love it. A white room, yeah. nevertheless. <laughs> I know, it is bloody white, isn't it? <laughs> Are you still doing your podcast? Uh, no, I've uh, just bandwidth, there was no no space for it, so yeah. I needed to prioritise um, who I was going to serve, and uh, I decided to really focus down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. On Hero. Hero, that is correct. Mate, uh, let's dive in. So the last 18 months have been an absolute whirlwind for me. I've been a, a father and... Uh, become a father and still am yeah thankfully uh, <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> uh it's been it's just been miraculous it's been one of the most uh unbelievably uh developmental periods in my life and uh i've been able to witness it just my, my child grow into just a, like the most special um creature that continues to amaze me every day yeah um and i've also been able to really kind of step out of myself and acknowledge the challenges that I've experienced on a personal level, stepping into fatherhood, um, and, and also appreciate what fathers have gone through before me mm. and continue to go through now. Does it give you like a, I don't know, almost like a, a sense of understanding with what your dad was going through when, when he was having you and kind of the challenges he was facing because we, we have an incredible capacity to exchange information in this day and age, you know? Mm. And this was something that our parents were just not subject to. They just didn't, I mean, they were, but they could, had to go to the library and learn and all this sort of thing. And we can just download a podcast like that. Does it just give you kind of like a, oh, I can kind of see he was, he was doing his best, you know? Absolutely. And I think the exchange of information that we have now, and, and, and I think... On top of that, we're also in a particularly um, privileged situation mm. and time in the history of the world. Um, from my personal uh, perspective and uh, generations before me, I mean, it was only two generations ago where my grandparents were experiencing, uh, you know, uh, existing and extermination mm. in concentration camps and then my my parents were as a direct result of being uh, children of them i feel like there was this uh this passing down of survival mode definitely uh onto uh, my parents generation and i feel like it's diluted somewhat since it's come to to us so we've really um began to explore how we can uh, self-love yeah. As opposed to just being survival mode. Yeah. Um, which is an interesting perspective to be in because uh, at least you you now have the privilege to hold a mirror up to yourself and and kind of say how can I uh, how can I serve myself so I can serve those around me. Yeah, that's a, such a good point, man. Like um, transgenerational trauma. We were talking about trauma before the podcast. Yeah. It's, it's a real thing, and you know you you, you develop you get that that modeling um, when you're around certain people that are subject to different things. And we all have been, you know, um, but that survival mode is, is, is serious, mm. you know, and because it, it served them, you mm. know, yeah. um, to the best of their ability um, with what they had. So yeah, that, I, God, I have a lot of questions, but I, that's a good, I'd love to pivot into that area. Yeah, How sure. has, it's obviously <coughs> becoming a father. Yeah you have to essentially be the best you can be all the time for mm -hmm. your child, you know? Mm -hmm. Has it been a process of you to kind of work on deprogramming some of the stuff that doesn't serve you that you kind of developed from, from that transgenerational trauma and things like that? Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Uh, you know, you, you, you slip into this survival aspect when because uh, you, you, no matter how much you can plan in theory for, mm -hmm. for, beca for, for, for welcoming another being that is completely dependent on you and your partner to, to live really just to survive mm. in this world um, you can plan as much as you want but really when push comes to shove um, 
you it, it's all a surprise and it's all about like moving the chess pieces around and intuitively trying to, to to grow with your partner to serve your your um your child um so it's about it, it takes a lot of self-reflection and you know i slipped into um probably some habits that I wasn't uh, that didn't serve me or or the family for periods of time and it took me some some time to really just kind of grow out of that and what we're trying to do at hero is so you know those those habits were like late night eating um, you know really like just even uh, you know having uh, drinks uh, at night time once I put Edie to bed just to kind of signify right I'm I'm done with being a dad for the night. Let's just like, let's just like check out yeah. for, for a couple of hours, you know? And after a while that just, I realized that was just not serving me or, or the family at all. Um, not that alcohol is necessarily a bad thing, but it's about, you know, when it, you're using it as a crutch, mm-hmm. um, you want to, you know, just at least self-assess. Definitely. So, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it, it's fascinating and um, what, what I found was I needed to hold myself accountable to being, uh, to, to, to having practices that would um, nourish myself so I could then um, nourish my family or play my part in nourishing my family and accountability was a big part. So I reached out mm-hmm. to a friend uh, who we hadn't had a tremendous amount of contact with uh, but we were in a similar situation where he was experiencing challenges in the new dad, I was experiencing challenges in the new dad, and, and, and essentially we held, held each other accountable um, to, to, to make steps to really, really develop ourselves as fathers and human beings. And that's, that's how Hero was born. Uh, he became my, my partner in this, uh, in, in this unbelievable journey so we can help serve other dads in, in the situation that we've been in yeah that's just the best like when you like really good authentic businesses are formed i think when um you develop a problem that is arising consistently in your life you're like well should i need some help here mm-hmm. reach out to someone else you develop a system or a way to kind of solve that problem and you're like if i'm experiencing this other people must be experiencing this and i think that I think businesses really, really do bloom like that. When the person, if I came to you, I know you've been through it. Mm. You know, people that actually put what they say into practice mm. far better than that whole stupid kind of do as I say, not as I do sort of thing. Mm. So like, Paulie's put in the work. I know he's put in the work here. I can trust him. You know, I wouldn't want to go and get a um, couple of PT sessions from someone who's incredibly obese. Or, yeah. you know, it's like, I know you've studied a shit ton, but you can't physically do it. it yeah. Just human beings don't work like that. That, that. That's a great point that you make because really that's just information. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if let's use the example of a personal trainer or a health coach. If they're struggling uh, weight-wise and, uh, you know, they are simply just delivering information, great, they've digested a textbook, whoop de do mm. You know, they need to, you need to be able to trust someone that's guiding you through um, whatever challenges you're uh, th- th- are before you, so you need to guide them through your transformation, not just you know information. Mm. That's uh, two separate things. Yeah, it, it totally is, man. And it's you can go, you can do it like towards like the spiritual thing of how human beings we're not just empirical data, and this is what the brain does. Mm. We're, we're much more experiential. Yeah. You know, in fact, we're, we're totally experiential. We apply like meaning that. to everything, yeah. irrespective of what the brain does. That stuff is beautiful at assisting, you mm. know, but fundamentally it's about how we apply meaning to things. And you know, I'm probably gonna be a lot more receptive to having you as a guide, you know, maybe one day when, when I have a little one, um, if I know that you've done the work yourself. So. Mm. What was the what were the first couple of things that you realised were like wow these habits are uh, they're really not serving. Um, it's it, it's a dynamic, constantly varying uh, experience being being a father. There are certain emotions that come up like guilt, uh, that, uh, that 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 obviously don't serve you as as an individual, and you just start to pay attention to them a little bit more, and you're just like. When you realize that, so what I realized I was moving into was uh, I was telling myself that I don't have the privilege 
of offering myself time mm. and love because I need to be doing things. Very masculine trait. Do, do this. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, I, I'm not, my child isn't physically dependent on me uh, like she is on my, my wife. You know, my wife was nursing, mm. um, for example, and various other things. So she was constantly, you know, in my wife's arms, etc., etc. So I'd go around and I'd do things, this, that, and the other. Um, but I wasn't, I wasn't feeling. I wasn't. Uh, yeah, you processing. got nice pecs, mate. But they're uh, probably not going to be doing much. Well, fun, <laughs> funny you say that. I was, I was lactating via, uh, uh, you know, empathy. Yes, and, yes. <laughs> uh, but that just made a terrible mess. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Physically. Uh, Physically a mess. <laughs> <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, so uh, there, there was this masculine trait that was manifesting where it was just do, 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 but not feel, feel, feel. And what I realized soon enough was is this, this lack of, um, you know, processing my feelings were just getting swept underneath the carpet mm. until one point I realized that I needed to start feeling and processing and once I started doing that, I, I just realized once I started feeling, uh, nourishing my inner self, then I, space opened up to be able to hold, um, you know, space for the, the rest of the family. Yeah. Which ironically is actually very masculine, holding space, protecting, Correct. you know, being that individual. There's that, um, there's that um, symbol of you know, the feminine consciousness and the masculine consciousness in Hinduism of the Shiva and, and Bhakti. And um, I'm from memory, um, the Shiva is, is the, the warrior God and he's just like lying on the ground and she's just dancing all over him because yeah. you're just holding space for that ex extremely powerful, crazy consciousness to do whatever it needs to do. And you're yeah. just chilling out, holding space, you know? Mm. So it's interesting how you kind of spoke, spoke about that, um, that you, you went inside and then by you allowing yourself the time to do that you actually became more masculine mm. you know mm. it's cool yeah yeah it was a it was a, it was a wonderful uh experience and i continue you know we're, we're always evolving and uh and growing but it's a it's been a hell of a journey to continue to um just open up i mean communication's been a big thing between mm -hmm. myself and uh my wife natty to be able to you know kind of ask how can we serve each other through this experience and uh and ultimately help Edie, our, our child, kind of grow yeah. uh, and, and find herself. So it's an it's, it's unbelievable experience. I think it would be, you know, you talk about um, finding meaning in life. And I think people are starting to move away from that pursuit of happiness and kind of getting the idea that finding something that's going to allow you to move through the ups and downs with intent is probably more applicable. Mm. Um, and people often get stuck in relationships that's in the psychology um, because there's a problem that manifests itself in the relationship and it ruins the dynamic a bit and then it's you fucking and then no you do this mm. but we forget that it's actually us two against what the problem is mm. you know and I think uh, having a child would be a very tangible way of seeing how we can resolve problems together because like I get I'm pissed off that you don't do this you're pissed off that I don't do this mm. But the problem is, how do we serve this thing right here? Yeah, it's 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 a great point. Um, you know, soon after Edie was was born, I soon realised that there are so many entities coexisting in my reality right now, and that is myself as an entity. There's Natty, my wife, as an entity. Out me and Natty as an entity mm. as a bonding. Um, relationship that needs to grow and be fed and all that kind of stuff and then there's the family entity me Natty and Edie yeah. you know that needs to, to grow and obviously Edie on her own so like all of these dynamics just need to be nourished individually and and, and, and also um, together mm. so being able to juggle these balls or uh, rather just you know, work out the nuances and the balance of it all is just a constant negotiation every day. Yeah. You want to ride. But it, it, it makes your life worthwhile. Totally. And because it, it takes away the time. I think this is where the, the really big thing about self development is that if you just apply a little bit of pressure and a bit of resistance, enough so that it's going to force you to change, you will change. Mm -hmm. Because we're adaptive like that, you know, and all of your time essentially has been taken away outside of 
working and then uh, you know helping all those entities that you mentioned before so you're gonna have to become better anyway you you, you need to or else yeah. you know yeah. you won't survive you totally. know uh, but it doesn't take as much as I think people blow it out of proportion and they feel like um, the shift required to, to survive is like so unbelievably monumental that um, some people just don't even try. Mm. You know, it's about taking uh, tiny steps that can compound over time that will um, make a, a really uh, like unbelievable change. But really it's just about stripping it back to small steps and then later on down the path these small shifts can really have a tremendous impact so yeah i think that's a good um good kind of segue to what i wanted to speak about with hero what what do you think just based off the men that you have worked with is like the pretty much the standard thing that men seem to do when they have a child that kind of falls off the bandwagon that probably needs to be switched up a little bit Mm. The themes that, that I've been uh, witnessing uh, are pretty common. And that is they get into survival mode, which is shit. I'm now the sole provider for this house. My job as the patriarch of this household is to provide because that's what society's told us totally. uh, to do so all their efforts are really honed in on providing for the family and and doing like i said before um so what tends to happen is after a short period of time of doing that they realize that they're they're struggling to keep their head above water Mm. in other aspects of their life and whilst all of their unbelievably um uh honorable intentions are to, to to make this this household the most uh, uh, beautiful place for, for the family to grow and thrive what tends to probably happen is is like I said before uh, and what happened with me is um, their emotions get swept under they're thinking they're never thinking about honoring themselves as individuals and they're just working their fingers to the bone their health their spirituality their um, emotions just get suppressed or never expressed and what happens when you what happens when you sweep things like this under the carpet enough they'll eventually come out and um when you, you're not nourishing nourishing any of those aspects then you, you just you're crying out for help at one stage mm. and that's what that's what we've noticed um uh, a lot of our our dads and our heroes are, have uh, been in crisis mode when they've reached wow. out to us like absolute crisis mode we have you know we, we have a questionnaire that they fill out um for us and it's it's unbelievable the stories that we w- that we hear of um where they're at right now when they reach out for help it's like Jesus. enough to break your heart yeah. yeah 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 do you think it's oh man i'm really fascinated by that do you think that um just automatic survival mode is um largely an extent of the way we've evolved do you think it's um, social impact like why do you think men are just doing that could, uh, be, could be both I think it is both mm. I, I think you know evolutionarily um, you know we, we've been the um, more you know the stronger bodied uh, person still to are <laughs> mate <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Steve and John. <laughs> One and two. You know it, mate. <laughs> Everyone just listening to the show, you have to watch that part for, for any of that to make any sense. That's going to be on the highlights, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll be the only highlight. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going out, we're hunting shit, we're, uh, you know, we're getting shit done. Totally. And uh, mum's at home nurturing for, for the child. Obviously, you know, there are so many dif- different... Um, combinations of uh, families that can exist uh, but I'm, I'm speaking from my own personal perspective um, and my own personal experience uh, because you know I can speak with authority about that but uh, even, even from like you said from an evolutionary perspective if the child is physically like has to be attached to yeah. the mother yeah. and you have the biggest stronger body what do you think is going to happen are you going to hunt or is the mum going to hunt? Exactly right. <laughs> and I'll hunt and lactate at the same exactly. time. Exactly. Do it all, mate. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we've, we've got that. But what is really interesting is a study has just recently come out about when your child, when your first child is born, um, no more than a couple of months after your first child is born, your testosterone 
drops up to on average about 34 percent from a male perspective wow. okay so so we've got all of these representations of an identity of what it's like to be a man mm. right to embody a, the identity of a man then your child comes along and your testosterone drops to a level that it has never been at until since you were like like a teenager wow so whilst you know, you're not aware of this in a conscious, on a conscious state. Biologically, these markers are, uh, you know, science is, is telling us that this is the case. Um, uh, but interestingly enough, when that testosterone drops, your caring mechanisms uh, and your bonding, uh, your bonding chemicals like oxytocin and dopamine and uh, things like that start to get on the incline. So you've got all of these changes in your biological chemistry just moving and shifting and going around and you don't know why it's going on you're mm. essentially having a male period to a certain yeah, yeah. degree but you're not aware of it um and you're trying to figure out what's going on inside of you you know your sex drive might not be as high you might start to put on weight because of your, your lack of testosterone. totally mm. uh so so you've got all of these things going on um, and, and you don't know why. So um, I don't know how I got to that point <laughs> it's a in, really in our good conversation. But no, but it is. I, th- I think one of your um, fundamental points is like, I mean, the whole, the whole reason why Hero is set up is like, right, dads need some help here. There's not a lot of dads. I mean, one of the best things about a podcast is you start to realize how kind of now reminded you are and how interesting, interested you are in a very specific amount of things. You know, mm. people aren't, a lot of, people that want to be dads want to be mums aren't interested in the shit that we're talking about but this stuff seriously affects their ability Mm. to be good parents Mm. so you start talking about how testosterone drops it's like as a man i'm supposed to be you know a fighter and a fucking or whatever it is but i just can't get out of bed now and all i want to do is spend time culling my wife right and that's a great thing but it will start to kind of you'll start to question yourself yep and you can understand why existential crises mm. a lack of purpose direction come into this absolutely and, and, and you think about it from an evolutionary standpoint you know previously we were out hunting and doing all that kind of stuff being manly men and then for some reason whatever's going on inside of us is happening for an evolutionary reason for us to most likely stick around and be with, uh, with, with our partner and our child uh, so men probably have a, an a level of difficulty negotiating and dealing with the this change in bi- biochemistry you know yeah yeah absol- absolutely and it's um it makes sense as to why that happens you mm. know if our if our drive is to hit the name going essentially yeah you know, that we want to be there for our children absolutely. and all that sort of stuff and you know there's a book i love um which is the way of the superior man um by david Dieter, and cool. his his whole thing is essentially what is what makes a man a good man when a man is no longer, um, you know, identified by how much money he makes or his status mm-hmm. and all that sort of stuff? And how how can you how can you feel within yourself that you are a man, like a good masculine mm-hmm. man? Because it's good to feel like a good masculine Absolutely. man, you know. And there, I, I would say it's, you know, there's different um, arrays of masculinity and femininity. But if your wife or your boyfriend, whoever you're with, um, is the polar opposite. You want to you wanna be that other opposite that feels intrinsically right to you because yeah. then you guys are going to bounce off each other and it's going to feel incredible, amazing, you know? Totally. So what would you say then is, you know, when, we're, when we become parents, mm. uh, and I'm just actually asking this for myself now so that when I become a dad, I'll know <laughs> what to do. Um, when we become parents and we kind of have these physiological changes and we start to question kind of our own masculinity, what um what are some ways to 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 keep it there and to to build on that well i think being able to acknowledge uh what is going on inside of you just just having the knowledge of what is going on inside of you is almost enough Mm. to be able to say okay cool this is happening inside of me um I may not feel like getting up out of bed and uh, doing exercise, but is that going to serve my health and well-being to uh, to, 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 to just, you know, uh, to slough around and, uh, you know, get larger and larger and uh, perhaps 
start to develop an, my, my own sense of um, lethargy and you know stats are, stats are really proving that postnatal depression in dads are becoming like a real thing because all of sure. these things that are going on um, and, 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 and this is not taking away from uh, the mother's experience either it's, no. uh, it's obvious that mums are like absolute heroes and, 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 and champions in themselves but obviously I'm speaking from my experience and I want to be able to guide dads through what is going on inside of their world. So, um, you know, the mental uh, well-being really takes a, a bit of a hit from a father's mm. uh, perspective on in general right now because they can't navigate their place in the family household. So being able to just acknowledge yeah. what the what the uh, the facts are inside of our bodies and what what goes on around your peers and what society, like you said before, what society expects of you. Mm. Um, and to be able to just hold that mirror up to yourself and say, hang on, what, do, what does my family need? Or more importantly, what do I need mm. so I can serve my family? And what we've found is, is um, not to break it down to oversimplify it, but just being able to work in, with starting points of just exercise, nutrition and lifestyle design, very simple building blocks to be able to... Uh, to be able to expand a man's place in their own world uh, and to make it applicable and uh, to make it uh, easily, uh, easily expressed in, uh, in, in a world where they are busy, you know, where they need to uh, work uh, long hours because that's the job they have or whatever it might be we, we work with we work with a lot of corporate people we work with a lot of dads that own their own businesses we work with um, a lot of dads that have a lot of external pressures and that's okay that's that's gonna that that exists yeah. okay we can't we can't change that they I doubt they want to change that but what we can do is deal with the way our dads respond to those pressures mm. and the way we're doing that is choosing those three three pillars those three platforms exercise nutrition and lifestyle design beautiful talk to me about lifestyle design like what do you mean what do you mean by that so we we keep it super simple once again you know it's my instinct to because I, like you i have a, a, a real interest in um being able to get the greatest benefits out of um small lifestyle changes or hacks or whatever it might be um but what i've found is with dads that they don't want that busy dads don't want you to throw a million different things <laughs> at them you yeah know? they're like what are you doing you yeah know? i don't have time for this shit yeah um so it's about keeping it super duper simple creating a really simple yet powerful morning routine Get creating a simple yet powerful sleep hygiene protocol um, almost changing the way dads look at exercise as well yep. to a certain degree a lot of people look at exercise as getting their shoes on getting in the car going to the gym getting on a cardio piece of equipment for 20 minutes, sweating it out, jumping on, uh, doing some CrossFit or whatever it might be, and then coming back all up, that's like an hour and a half out of your day, and they sit at the desk for the rest of the day. Mm. So we, we know that that is going to, mean, I mean, that hour and a half out of their day is going to be quite cumbersome in itself, but sitting at your desk immobile uh, for in that sedentary position for the entire um the rest of the day is not serving you either mm -hmm. you know uh so we teach our dads to start to pepper exercise throughout the day in ways that they wouldn't have thought could be applicable as well yep uh and you know simple um you know use of an acronym called NEAT which is non-exercise attributed thermogenesis Sexy, huh? That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a bit of thermogenesis in the, in the uh, pantry, actually, mate. Hello. Next to the wheat picks. <laughs> Just pepper it on. <laughs> wheat picks and thermogenesis. <laughs> Couldn't even say. <laughs> and that's just basically a simple way of just saying uh oh, not a simple way a very complicated way of saying incidental exercise like what, what's the shit you do throughout the, your day that you might be able to get a little bit more of a biological benefit out of yeah yeah if you're going for a, 
if, if you go into a meeting with a, you know a colleague make it a, a walking meeting around the block you know mm. um, if you it's it's simple stuff yeah but stuff it's the simple stuff that people don't actually think about yeah and you know you can get your you know twenty thousand steps or whatever it is because you know like you and I come from a health and well being background and twenty thousand steps or whatever it is ten thousand steps um, doesn't seem like a, a tremendous um, uh, you know challenge or um, you know accomplishment but. It really is when you work an office job and you're sitting in that sedentary position. These are like really, really powerful things to be able to get to get you moving mm. and to get your health uh, flowing. So that's one example. Another really cool um, thing I actually found when when I was when when Edie was only a, a wee tot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she had you know whenever we would feed her and she had difficulty um, digesting milk. And we need to get a burp out. The only way I found personally, and I just found that through this, through my own experience, um, was to, to get her diaphragm on my shoulder here and jump down and up doing squats. No, and she, and it's, she would like fall asleep because of this vestibular movement within a child reminds them of being inside the womb. So moving in this position, uh, moving uh, up and down and side to side or whatever it might be it actually soothes a, a, a baby uh, like I said because it, if they feel like they're, they're still in the womb but at the same time I'm getting like sweating yeah. I'm sweating you know I'm doing like having a sesh Matt totally I'm doing like 150 squats a day yeah <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. It's good. And it's a really good point. You know, I mean, um, God, we keep touching on the evolutionary perspective of yeah. things, which is really, like, it's purposeful. But, you know, we evolved to exercise um, for, for intent. You know, mm. we need to exercise because we needed to make shelter and need mm. to go and hunt and do all things. And now we kind of live the other way where exercise, we have to go out of our way to exercise, which yeah. is very strange. And it's, it, it's, um, it takes time away, you know? So I think that's a really great point. If you can put exercise into your life, mm. it doesn't feel like you're doing exercise. It's just like, it's a thing that you do to get from point A to point B. Mm. Yeah, you're spot on. We've commoditized exercise, like we commoditize everything mm -hmm. because that's just the way we filter the world now because mm -hmm. that's what society tells us to do. Um, we're commoditizing yoga meditation all of these uh aspects because that's just the, the only way modern world can can digest yeah what what these things are yeah you have to go out and get it go out and do it you know in japan you can they've commoditized they've created the whole relationship um into a you know consumerist entity like you can go out and pay someone to hug and cuddle in a bed it's unbelievable. It's crazy. I like unbelievable. Really like it. <laughs> of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> Guys will wacky jam They're doing well. <laughs> but yeah, like we can do all that ourselves. And if we can find a reason to do that, it becomes a part of who we are. And and that's the main thing. It's that, that reason. And on top of just the reason, it's about accountability and support. And the main thing on top of all of these, you know, really interesting strategies that I've me and my, my partner Dan have re really been spending a lot of time just trying to manifest and cultivate onto into a, like a like a program that we're so proud of yeah. for our dads the thing far and beyond over all of um, these these things these strategies that we're giving our dads is the support that we're giving them to to show them that it's so important to to have this as a priority in their own life, and what happens is is once they have that support and that accountability, they follow through with what's going on in their life, and they've just noticed that their family life, in turn, has just been so much easier because then they have the space to support their loved ones. Mm. That, that's the best thing and again it comes back down to the fact that we are a social species yeah you know we, we, we can't do it alone you yeah. shouldn't want to do it alone so much better like i mean 
the, what I've just learned now from all this sort of stuff just by con- conversing with you is stuff that I'm going to be able to take on to other people that haven't learned it and then vice versa and we grow as a society and all that sort of thing you know um, support networks man it's, it's, it's crazy unbelievable obvious but crazy <laughs> it, it, it's it is obvious but once again so many people just want to do it alone yep. you know they're like I've got this mm. you know mm. uh, but you know that vulnerability to be able to and you know like who's who's got the time some some people just mm-hmm. don't have the time to be able to to do these things on their own uh but yeah just to, to just to be part of uh, a community and that's what, another thing we've really really focused on developing is the community around the hero um uh network so not just it's their it's not just their coaches that can um you know that, that can support uh dads to become these heroes but it's dads and dads uh to be able to help each other where they're at at the current stage in time in their their journey um to be able to help and exchange ideas and to support each other through their own reciprocal growth yeah yeah Yeah. i'm fascinated by what what is the when a when a first time dad comes to you what do you typically see as being the problem that's most prevalent within their lives like what do they say to you uh the the things that come out the most is time there's no time (laughs) there's never ever any time and it's often more often than not it's they get they're in crisis mode right so it's taken a while for them to get to here yeah um which is brilliant that they feel they can actually reach out yeah totally mm. totally totally it's unbelievable uh and 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 we commend them on it every every time they do um you know extend that vulnerability to us because i know how hard it can be yeah like you do i do and i have experienced it and it's uh it takes a like a real in my opinion fucking good dad a fucking great dad to (laughs) be able to say I want to better You're a good myself. dad, mate. Well, <laughs> it ta- you want to better yourself to better your family. Of course, of course. So t- time's a big thing. Energy uh, is, is a massive thing. You know, they just... These dads just feel like they wake up tired all the time. They go to sleep tired all the time. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and then you just got to kind of look at yourself and kind of go, well, what's the point? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, what's, yeah. what's the point? So it's, it's energy, it's time. It's obviously... Um, a lack of self love when you know there's that aspect of looking at the mirror and it's not aesthetics of like um look at me i want i want a six pack it's about i want to respect the manifestation of what's in front of me in the mirror so Mm, i I feel like i've got it yeah and what's really interesting and this is what i i really want to touch on is the the role modeling for their children is like unbelievably powerful um, for these dads. The transformations when they make them, um, they've realized that because kids are just so unbelievably um, sponge worthy and they pick everything up, when you switch sitting down at 9 p.m. with a hamburger and a beer on the couch with like stains running down your bloody <laughs> business shit yeah to doing push-ups sit-ups and squats whilst watching like let's say the tv's on whilst watching tv or stretching whilst watching tv your kids are noticing everything Mm. you know like absolutely everything and they when they're of age they start joining in with you which is the coolest thing ever you know uh so it's that whole monkey see monkey do thing and when you realize that they realize what you're doing, it really fuels you to get your ass into gear and start doing wow. some some powerful, positive things. Wow, that's awesome. That's really, really uh, inspiring. I gotta get cracking, mate. Mate, <laughs> I, gotta get, I gotta get Siobhan down here. <laughs> Just give us a couple of minutes. Yeah, a couple of seconds. Uh, two minutes, okay? <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd be uh, probably too much. Okay, <laughs> yeah. four play. Four play. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, that's brilliant. That's brilliant. And I, I wanted to. Um, pick your brain a bit more about what you mean by um, when you're looking in the mirror and when you can be proud of the person 
that's looking back at you? Like, what, what do you mean by that? Um, I think, you know, a, a visual representation of who you are in the mirror is not what is physically in front of you. Of course. It's the hard work that you've put into what is in front of you. Uh, and that can come mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And if you have put all that hard work um, into yourself, and like I said, that compounded, um, the, the compounded effects, that's what's staring at you in the mirror. Yeah. Not, not, your, not, not your meat and bones. Mm-hmm. It's all the hard work and all the... Um, by hard work, I don't mean it for it to be grueling. I mean it for it to be like unbelievably rewarding. Yeah, purposeful. You know, purposeful. Uh, stepping out of your comfort zone to develop yourself in all of these different facets. That's what's looking at you in the mirror. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you've either got a deficit or, uh, you know, you've got money in the bank, yeah. uh, so to speak. And I think that's what looks at you in the mirror once you're, once you're putting in the hard yards. And obviously, you know, once you see um, physical attributes that uh, are uh, a manifestation of the hard work that you've put in, that's also really rewarding and that's validating. But generally speaking, I think all of these different things going on in the background is what, what stares at you in the mirror. Do you know... What I was just thinking of when you were talking to me then about that is like the way we could almost describe it is the, it's, it's almost like when you're looking in the mirror, it doesn't matter what you see back superficially because you just have this like intrinsic self-belief and confidence. Mm. You know, it's just like, I don't care if my nose is like this, if I don't have a six pack of them, it's like, I'm like the fucking most confident individual right now. And I know that pragmatically based on what I put into my life and mm. everything that's serving me, you know? Mm. Um, so I started jujitsu like six months ago. Yeah. We were talking about it before. It's awesome. Yeah. It was, it's, and it's really good. And I've been thinking about the differences between men and women. Um, and I don't know too much about it, but I just feel like, especially with some of the blokes that I've spoken to, um, down on the mat and at the club, we just have like this real energy, within us you know this real uh, whether it's related to high testosterone levels the way we've evolved all sorts of things you know mm. um we just have this innate like capacity to like want to engage in risk and want to like just put ourselves out there you know and and do all that sort of thing and for me nothing has been more beneficial to my mental health seriously and i've been trying to get my mental health on track for a long long time mm. and um it's, it's in a good place now you know but right. nothing has been more beneficial to me than Staring another bloke who's a higher belt at me in the face, knowing that he's trying to take my head off. Uh, but the, the amount of discipline and humility of you know being able to learn something new and being able to suck at something and getting into your body and out of your mm. head and all this sort of stuff, you know. And it just made me think of what you were talking about about how movement is so important mm. um, for these dads specifically because yes. They are providing for their family financially, but at what cost? Mm. It means they have to sit down all day like this mm. for a lot of us. You know, we like to think that we tend to move more stand up desks and things, but a lot of us are like this mm-hmm. and we have to, you know. Um, that takes a serious toll. And you have three or four coffees a day, that stimulation of the nervous system, like just a little bit of movement is going to make a fundamental difference. Such a fundamental difference. And, you know, are you familiar with the Pomodoro? method I think I'm referencing it correctly yeah which is he, he's a Italian no, no shit uh, <laughs> true uh, <laughs> he's an Italian pizza <laughs> he's an Italian pizza yeah. delicious he, he didn't say much <laughs> <laughs> um, he was an Italian research scientist that basically came up with uh, 20 minutes being the most optimal uh, time to be productive throughout like a cycle and then the most the, the best thing you can do to serve you is to take a break after 20 minutes 20 minutes focus like hell take a break and you know a lot of people obviously don't adhere to this um in, especially in an office space but imagine if we did and imagine if we took one minute to just i don't know just move whether it's rapidly whether it's stretching whether it's smashing some push-ups and sit-ups out or a burpee whether it's just 
doing a few salutes to the sun, mm. whether it's uh, grappling, like play fighting with your kid or with like another mate at, yeah. at, at work. Could, right. you, We're could you imagine? It's just rolling. It would be, just go, be so the coolest good. thing ever. Yeah. Could you imagine if workspaces were like that, if they had permission, every 20 minutes would just be like this massive siren went yeah. and everyone just rolled for a minute and then back time. to work. Oh, mate, it would, oh, the mental health change would be ridiculous. Be amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just having that contact as well. Like yeah. another thing I've noticed is just like grappling and wrestling and actually, oh yeah, that's right. There's others, there are people out here as well. Yeah. You know, it makes you feel so much more confident in yourself, in your, yeah. in your body. Because yeah. your body's not separate to the universe anymore. Agreed. You know? Very much agreed. Yeah. Um, and there's many, obviously, many different ways to skin a cat with, with, with movement. <laughs> Oh, without a doubt. And, and, and I think that's it. It's about finding what works for you and what you identify with and challenging yourself to, you know, to continue to explore uh, uncomfortable terrain as well. Because like we were talking about before, when you step into that discomfort and you step into that uncharted territory and then you combat it, you, you you don't feel like you've achieved anything if you if you do something that you know was easy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's That's just... Definition. Waking up, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> waking up is easy. That was rough. <laughs> that, was, that was a tough sleep. <laughs> gotta get, get a, go get a beer now. <laughs> I, know, I know, mate. Um, where can people find Hero? Um, how do we find you? Because this is really good. This is really good. It's um, important. Well, it's important, and it was important for me. It was important for my partner Dan, and we knew it was going to be important for for dads moving uh alongside us and that's what it is it's alongside us we're not there's no hierarchy of um fatherhood here it's about helping each other to get the the greatest results out of our own personal experience and then communal experience um best place to to find us is hero.cm that's com without the o Nice. Yes, we're tired asses. We didn't buy hero.com. <laughs> Come on, mate. <laughs> Maybe if one dad signs up, you'll be able to get the O in there. <laughs> uh, hero.cm backslash training. So I'll give you the link and we can stick it in the show notes. Yep. And I'd love to be able to uh, offer your listeners 25% off uh, anything that really? we're doing here just because I know um, the, the, the information that you offer and... Um, the value that you offer your audience and the audience that ha- that, that, that really really um, just jumps in and and uh, is is so involved in, in all of this mm. uh, physical and mental health stuff is such a powerful thing so that's just something I'd love to be able to do for you guys as well mate that's that's brilliant yep and there'll be a, a code for that that they can jump yeah, on yeah we'll, we'll sort something out and we'll put it in the show notes for yeah, sure yeah brilliant and you know just one thing as well um, that you said before your your taking these dads alongside your journey as well. And I really like that if anyone out there is interested in doing their own thing and is worried a little bit about imposter syndrome or whatever it is, it's essentially like you've solved a problem that is that is a very important problem to solve. There's a, an infinite amount of things that you still don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe someone comes to you that needs help solving that problem that you solved, but then they can help you solve another thing as well. You know, it, that's growth. Absolutely. And it's, you, you hit the nail on the head. Mm. It's about... It's about overcoming a, a, a hurdle in your own personal life and experience and being able to share that with other people and then growing as a, as a result of that together. Totally, yeah. totally. Mate, this was legendary. Very, very legendary. Yeah, so good. It's always a pleasure, man. Always and, a pleasure, uh, That's a wrap.